Uh, what's going on everybody? We're back for another video. And this has been a long time coming. We actually just got our OBD 11 in and we're pretty much going to do probably like a top 10 uh, mods and cool tricks that you could do with this particular unit. And uh, let's just jump right into it. All right, for those of you who don't know, OBD 11 is pretty much an onboard diagnostic system. This will be able to tell you what's going on with your car if you have any trouble codes or faults. Also, it will be able to give you or unlock a lot of hidden features that um, Audi slash Volkswagen don't um, provide via factory. But this is capable for your GTI, Golf R, any kind of Volkswagen actually. And then for on this one, it's going to be done on the Audi S3, but it could be done on the A3 and the RS3. Um, but pretty much, there's two units here. This one is for the iPhone. Make sure, I'll link both down below, but make sure you order the right one for if you have an Android, there's a different one. It's a different color, different style as well. So make sure you get it right because it will not pair with your iPhone if you get the Android one. But pretty much, we're going to plug this in the OBD2 port and we're just going to start unlocking some features and kind of walk you through it. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's actually go ahead and plug this in. For those of you who um, don't know where the port is, it's pretty much right under where your left leg would be right under the column there and this goes in only one way so make sure you have it the right way you'll plug it in there and it will light up red because the car is off and they, it's not connected to my phone so i'm going to put the car onto the on position i'm not going to start it and you'll have to have the app download it which is obd 11 it'll look like this and once we got it paired up gotta have bluetooth on and you'll press connect and it will pop up for OBD 11 too and it will start connecting to your vehicle. I already went ahead and set a password so I'm just going to enter that in and now it's detected my vehicle for some reason it says A3 but this is indeed an S3 so you think <laughs> yeah yeah right so I was lied to I know I'm fine brown smell of that base though so now that it's all connected to my phone I could press this big circle here that says tap to scan and this will pretty much check all the systems, all the control modules within the car. And if there's any fault, it will say a couple problems. Um, I do know that I have some problems, so we'll be able to kind of display those. But um, it's going to go through the whole system and just, you know, give me fault codes and everything like that. So we'll do its thing. It'll take some time. It's on number 8 out of 21. So this is pretty much the one feature that I guess if you're a DIYer like us, it's good to have because it will kind of tell you what's going on with your car rather than take it to a dealer. Of course, it doesn't say like what exactly is wrong. You kind of got to do some diagnosing and kind of figure it out and do your research and kind of process of elimination. But this is one feature I'm not really going to go over because you guys are here for the tips and tricks. But it is the prime, you know, the most important part of this tool is being able to figure out what's going wrong with your car. Um, so I found four problems. Now I could pretty much figure out what it is I have an engine problem brakes problem and the air condition problem and multimedia the multimedia one I know is because the satellite radio I don't have that it has a code for the oxygen sensor because I'm running rich with the tune and for the air condition I have a flap that's malfunctioning so I got to replace that I just let that be for now but now let's get into the important part of this video and we're going to show you what functions and kind of codes we could do to kind of pimp our ride I guess <laughs> all right so now what we're pretty much going to do is click on apps and we're going to be able to go through all the systems that we could kind of, you know, change and alter and kind of make to our personal liking. Um, as you can see, there's so many things. Compass, position on dashboard, navigation, phone on dashboard, so on and so forth. I'm not going to read them all, but as you can see, there's so many. And these are all things we could program to, um, you know, change from factory. I just want you to know that there is, as you can see in the top right corner of each little picture, there's a 10 and then a C. So there, each thing you change is worth credits. So say I want to do uh, the throttle pedal response, I want to change it to, you know, increase response speed for your throttle pedal. You can change that, it will cost 10 credits. So make sure whatever you change, you properly, you know, plan out because these credits you either have to buy or you could buy the OBD2 or OBD 11 with multiple like 200 credits I think this one came with a hundred or you could watch ads for free five a day I think but so you want to make sure you use your credits wisely and some are 10 some range even more like this one for example the video in motion is a hundred and that's pretty much to be able to watch TV through the DVD player while you're driving I think that's a waste of money but hey if you have kids and you want them to watch it by all means do it but it's a distraction 
But uh, pretty much we're just going to go over ones that I personally am going to change and I think that are the top 10 and these are mostly compatible with the, all the cars that I mentioned in the beginning. Some might be a little different because, you know, different um, parts from a manufacturer but for the most part these should be, you know, uh, standard for the average uh, cars that we listed. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so now we're just pretty much going to go down the line, and um, as you can see with the screen recording, I'm going to have it on the side here. It's just going to be able to go through exactly what I'm doing. As you can see, there's so many things you could change here. A lot of these are actually already preset in my car. I don't know if they're preset in like the A3 or the GTI, but I know the higher end cars, they are preset. But for example, let's do throttle pedal response I know a lot of people do this one so this will be the the first one that I recommend um, this is going to be increasing the response speed of your throttle pedal so we're going to do change value and right now it's on standard and I want to change it to responsive so it's a little more responsive when I click it when you know I'm pressing the gas it's a little more almost instantaneous so when I press it right away it will go a lot harder so I'm going to activate that might get me in trouble but I'm going to use 10 to change that so boom just like that it's already done so once I turn on my car and everything I have that throttle response all right so now that brought me down 10 credits down to 106 so the next thing a lot of people use is the mirror dip um, this isn't folding mirrors you can activate folding mirrors if you have the electronic folding uh, computer within the mirrors but this is more just the mirror dip so when I put the car in reverse the mirror is gonna dip tilt down so I'm gonna turn that on uh, as you can see you could read it right here for yourself you can just pause it and read that I'm not gonna read it all but I'm going to change that value, and I'm going to do on. So when I, whenever I put it in reverse, that should um, dip down. And just like that, we're down to 96 credits. So they do go quick, uh, but that's number two. And then number three, the sound actor is pretty much from factory, Volkswagen, Audi. They give a amplified noise to recreate the engine kind of RPM and just give it that sporty feel from factory. It will come through the speakers. Personally, I think it's kind of chachi, but it's a cool style that they did do. Um, you know, it's a cool idea just to give you that sporty feel. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to delete that. That's going completely off. You could change the percentage if you want to bring it down to 70% or 50% and so on and so forth, but I want this completely off. So I'm going to activate that and boom, there's another 10 credits down the drain. Number four, a lot of people do do this. I'm not going to do it, but I am going to mention it. Um, the exhaust flap deactivation. This would be 10 credits as well. And it's pretty much, you know, how if you have the um, valve system, like mostly the Golf R, the Audi S3, maybe the RS3, I'm not too, too sure. But when you're in sport mode, those flaps will open up to let more airflow and make it sound really more aggressive. You can completely deactivate this. So if you're in regular drive mode, you could have those flaps currently open and um, you know you'll just have that raw performance and just really sporty feel to it I personally am not gonna do that I have a custom exhaust set up from the get-go so I'm not gonna change that this is a cool one the dynamic LED turn signals this is pretty cool because it will kind of change the uh, the way the turn signals are displayed I believe it's called the herb yeah exactly it's uh, commonly known as the urban joke so I'm gonna turn that on for the US. So I'll have Wes do a B-roll of that right now. I activated that, that's another 10. So we brought it down a little more, so we got a couple more to go, but I'm trying to give you the most common ones. There's so many that you could do. All right, so the sixth one I'm gonna go into is pretty much the ESC off permanently. This is pretty much the traction control, especially if the Quattro or an all-wheel drive system you wanna launch. Um, even when you press the ESC button off on the control or on the uh, you know on the dash it doesn't completely turn it off yes you could hold it down for another five seconds and it will turn off but I still think there's some traction so a way to get rid of that completely is just change the value and you're gonna want to do um, so once you press that ESC button it's gonna remove it completely so as you can see I just did ESC off so I'm gonna activate that and now traction control will be completely off so now that's number six and I highly recommend that if you you know if you have a tune you're boosting your car enthusiast it's just another way to um, get the ultimate driving experience so now for number seven we do the high intensity brake light this is another common one that 
a lot of people do. So pretty much what it states is when you're pressing the brake extremely hard, like almost like an emergency panic braking, it will um, flash, the hazard lights will flash. So it just gives like, if it's a foggy weather or a rainy day, the car behind you just makes them extra aware if they're not paying attention fully like they should be, just gives them that extra notice to uh, you know slow down because obviously you're slamming on your brakes for something in front of you. So I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna turn that on and we'll hit activate. And just like that, we're down to 46 credits. So make sure you have enough. Well, I can't stress that enough. For number eight, I'm going to do the seatbelt warning. If you're going to be driving on the highway or the street without your seatbelt, definitely don't recommend this. But I personally, sometimes I'm working on my car and I want to take it around the block and I hate hearing that chime and I can't put my seatbelt on because it's dirty or whatever the case may be. I could turn that completely off um, so it won't you know, won't trigger that chime. So I'm gonna change that volume, but once again, I'm not responsible. If you get in an accident with your, you know, and your seatbelt doesn't, isn't on, that's not on me. I just wanna say that people do this. So just be careful, use it at your own risk. I'm gonna change that value right now and put that to off. And I'm gonna hit activate. All right, for number nine, I'm gonna tie the two together. This one's called the window auto drop. So pretty much if I change that value to on, um, when I open up the door, it's gonna automatically lower down a little bit just to depressurize the system or depressurize the car. And then it will prevent, you know, slamming of the vehicle of the door. So I'm gonna change that now. I'll show you how that works. But um, I turned that on, that was 10 credits. So I'm also gonna combine that with the Windows function from remote. I currently am able to change this through the MMI unit, but a lot of people aren't. Um, that's why mine says not support it. But um, pretty much what it's gonna allow you to do if you turn it on is if you press the unlock button, all the windows are gonna go down, including the sunroof is gonna open. And then if you press the lock button and hold it, all the windows are gonna go up and close and same with the sunroof. So that's just a cool function. Like if it's a hot day, you're walking towards your car, you unlock them all, just let that heat out so you don't hop in the car and it's you know scorching in there. So that would be number nine as well. I think that's tied together with the other window. And then number 10 is really not gonna be a cool trick. It's more gonna be under the workshop tab. And this is gonna save you money and save you time from going to a dealer. Um, if you guys have followed us, you probably saw the brake upgrade we did with this. And for the rear brakes, you have an electronic parking brake right here that you have to disengage in order to retract the pistons, otherwise you'll blow out the piston. And a lot of people don't know that when you're changing the rear pads, you do need to do that. Otherwise, like I said, you're gonna blow out the piston. It's gonna be pretty, pretty costly. So I'm gonna tie that in for number 10 under brake pads replacement mode. You check select value and it will be um, open which means it's gonna open the, um, the electronic parking brake and that way when you put the new pads in and rotors, you could retract that without breaking the piston. Also, I'm gonna include the oil service reset. Most will be able to change through the MMI unit or you know, a couple buttons to change to reset that so your oil light's not on. Um, that's something you could do through here. And then one thing you can't do by yourself, you do need a scan tool or go to the dealer is the inspection service. You'll be able to reset that because you won't be able to do that without a scan tool or going to the dealer. I'll show you right here on the screen. Under systems, servicing and control, go to service intervals. The next, ins I can see I could rechange the oil light or the oil change, but I can't reset the next inspection, which is 7,600 miles. It doesn't give me an option to do that. So I could do that through the OBD2 right here. Um, and that's pretty much like your basic maintenance 40,000 mile interval or whatever the case may be So that's another thing under workshop that you can do with this particular OBD um, 11 tool so I'm gonna combine all the maintenance and workshop as a, they listed here for number 10 All right, so now that I'm all done with all the coatings and everything I'm gonna go back to the home page. This is the way to exit just so you have no issues You just press disconnect. It's gonna be like are you sure you want to disconnect? Say yes, disconnect. Now you can remove the OBD11 uh, little module, little computer thing. And that's pretty much gonna wrap up today's video. This was a super easy uh, little mod, kind of way to, you know, kind of pimp your ride, quote unquote, I hate saying that, but it is a pretty cool way to change everything. Um, I know a lot of you guys 
uh, over 200,000 of you like the previous video of the top 10 Audi tips and tricks on your A3, S3, RS3, GTI, um, Golf, Golf R, etc. So I wanted to kind of keep this similar to that and kind of do a more generic style video of, you know, things that you could do with a $70 piece. Um, but if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. We got big things coming for this. We actually just got a, uh, if you want to come over here, we got a new wheel sponsor. And I'll just show that right there. Rohana, huge shout out to them. We got some nice RFX 11s coming. We'll do a reveal video on that. Also, I want to mention my uh, foolish mistake of uh, hitting uh, the curb on my lowered car. So I ended up getting a new RS3 style bumper conversion kit. And we're gonna be painting that and a whole video on that. So feel free to watch that because I know a lot of people do like that RS3 style bumper. Uh, we're gonna do a whole paint in depth tutorial, how it fits, how it looks, before and afters and stuff like that. So make sure you're tuned in, notification bell is on and uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. So see you in the next one, peace.